Here's a breakdown of this grease pencil render I did recently. I go over the process and give you insights into why and how I do different things. The whole process took about one hour and 20 minutes, but that's with me giving little bits of tutorial explanation in there as well. If you want to see the full non-edited footage, you can become a member of my channel where you can see other videos like this with full unedited workflows. And check out my Grease Pencil playlist for an introduction to Grease Pencil and other tutorials which show most of what I'm doing here. And if you like what I do, then check out my Grease Pencil course, which is currently only $10 for this weekend only. It covers 2D animation and there's lots of fun projects in there to get you working on Grease Pencil nice and quickly. All the links are in the description. So let's take a look at how I made this amazing little house. So we start the project off just by basic modeling of the house structure. I start with the steps at the front using the default cube, of course. I'm using proportional edit to make it kind of triangular and change it in gradual increments like I am here. The modeling is really basic and simple. The detail is in the grease pencil objects. And I'm adding a little bit of randomization to this so that it has a bit of wibbly wobbliness, as I like to call it. The house structure itself, again, really simple, just a cube that's been stretched and pulled around the place. For the roof at the top, I grab the top plane, duplicate it and separate it out, and then just make it a bit bigger, add a solidify modifier, and that can be my roof, and then just add some guttering type stuff at the front here, or fascias, I think they're called, aren't they? I'm adding a few loop cuts here. This is for the door at the front and the window as well. It also is slightly helpful to add a little bit of variation again to have just a touch more um, topology to play with, but you can see I'm dividing up the spaces for the doors and windows here, grab those faces, extrude them inwards. Then I grab the face on the inside, uh, separate that, duplicate it, separate it out and inset it. And then I've got a window frame with a solidify modifier. I've got a window frame. A lot of the time I'm going into edit mode for several objects and then editing them so I can grab vertices on all different objects, especially when you're working with different objects like I am here. Go into edit mode for all the objects at once, and then you can edit them in edit mode all at the same time. Hopefully that makes sense. So I've created the basic look. I'm adding a little bit of details here, like little notches and things. I often do that. I do a bit of adjustment to the shape of some of the objects to make sure I'm happy. And I do a little bit of adjustment to the topology at the side there. Because I've edited it and made, made it wibbly wobbly, uh, then I need to just adjust it a little bit to make sure that I haven't got huge planes that are going to distort when I add some lighting in. With the roof, again, I add a little notch in there to make sure uh, it's got some variation, some interest, some character. And again, wibbly wobbliness is the key word at the moment. And then I'm adding a plane for the floor. Um, resize it, of course, and then just give a little pavement look at the front there. And again, a bit of wobbliness to make sure it's got some variation to it. And that really is the crux of the modeling. It's not particularly detailed, just nice and straightforward. So now we're ready for the texturing. I want to add some color to the basic objects before going into grease pencil. You can actually paint grease pencil strokes onto objects and color things in, but I thought it'd be much easier and quicker to just add basic colors to the objects themselves. What I'm mainly using grease pencil for in the overall finished piece is just the details, the kind of sketched on, um, yeah, sketched look is the final result that I want from the grease pencil rather than the coloring. So I do all the shading within the shader editor and I'm trying generally to keep to kind of pastel colors, uh, a nice sort of I don't know, European look with the house. Um, and yeah, I'm thinking pastel colors would be best. So that's the shading complete. So the next part is to add a grease pencil object. So I start with a blank grease pencil object. You can see the object origin in the center there. I'm going a little bit slower for this, so I've sped it up three times because the first layer that I use is the line art layer um, for the grease pencil, and that will give me an outline and it works through the camera's perspective. So whatever the camera's looking at will have this line art. You need to put all your objects you want to be affected into a collection. So you can see that I'm adding them to the house collection here. I move my grease pencil out of the collection so it doesn't get confused. Um, but in the collection option, I choose the house. In the layer, I choose the only layer available on that grease pencil. And you just gotta make sure that the material is the black stroke. And there it is 
It's very thin at the moment, but I'll turn the overlays off and then put the line radius up so you can see that. And there is the grease pencil strokes. And when I come out of camera view, you can actually see there are no strokes on the opposite side. So it's only working from the camera view that you'll see those particular outlines. Now I've added a new grease pencil layer and this, this is one I'm going to do the sketching on. I changed my brush around a little bit. So it's got a nice lot of jitter and a bit of randomness, not too much, but just a subtle bit. So you can see I'm experimenting, trying to get the right look. And I eventually am happy with this look. Then I do a practice stroke, but forget that I haven't actually enabled the surface stroke placement. So I do that and then start drawing on the object and I give it a little bit of an offset. So that will push it away from the surface slightly. So make sure that it's not overlapping. And then I start drawing all my bricks and things like that. And I think I start speeding up the footage in a second to 10 times. Oh, and I turn the outline layer off. That was a bit distracting, but I'll add it in at the end or turn it back on at the end. And I'm just going around adding some detail. You can hold down control for the delete brush, eraser brush, I should say, um, but it gives you the soft eraser brush and I haven't found a way to turn on the um, hard eraser brush, which is the one I use, but I generally don't delete much. It's all very sketchy anyway, so um, nice and easy and very rough, generally speaking. I've now put it up to 15 times speed because you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just literally sketching away on top of the objects. Occasionally you'll get a rogue stroke spinning off into the distance and you'll see some of them there. You can either delete them or you can go into edit mode and delete the vertices, things like that. You have to be a little bit careful with your delete brush because anything behind your brush uh, or in front of your brush, I should say, will be deleted. So if you think something's on the other side of the object, you can't see those grease pencil strokes and you delete, you'll be deleting those ones in the background as well. So watch out for that. You can hide objects if you don't want to draw on them as well. So I needed to get underneath the roof there. So I hid the roof and then did the drawings. And it's just a case of sketching away, having fun, uh, putting in the shading, uh, think about where your light's going to go in the finished result and uh, consider where you're going to put the shading from that point of view. And then we have the sketch layer done. The next thing I do is actually add some fill in. So this is where I'm actually doing some coloring. I did say that most of it's done with the object shaders, but I want to do a little bit of fill in there as well. And you can see I'm bringing in a fill layer and it's underneath my sketch or the first layer. That's important because you want the sketch layer, those black lines to be on top of the fill. So make sure that your fill layer is underneath and then you can go around with a fill brush and fill in, well, these bricks is what I'm doing first. And there is a way of changing the colors. You can see that I'm able to change all the colors at the same time here with using one material. But the problem with that is it's not particularly fast. So I use the color attribute option and I've got a tutorial on this in my grease pencil playlist. But if you use the color attribute, you can just quickly change the colors. The downside to this is that you can't adapt them after you've painted them in. So you'll have to repaint them if you want to adapt them at all. Whereas the material option is quite nice because you can, once they're painted, you can change that color, which is quite specific to Blender, that option and availability of that feature. So the color attribute method is the way to quickly paint in or fill in strokes. At this point, I decide to split my viewport into two. So I've got a sort of zoomed out version and a zoomed in version. That way I can kind of see the results of the colors as a whole rather than just the area that I'm dealing with. The reason I want to vary the colors of the bricks and the paving is because it adds a bit more character as if they're natural stone or some natural brick and they've got lots of different variations. That's what you tend to see on older buildings uh, using natural stone or um, they haven't got the same machine techniques as we have in the modern age. So colors tend to be slightly different. And I do the same with the roof tiles. They're supposed to be kind of wooden roof, roof tiles, but um, they could be anything really. Um, they're just lines and they're a bit of a mess. Lastly, I do go back to my sketch layer and just fill in a few scratches and dinks and things like that. The last thing to do then is to use some lighting. Now you can turn your layers so that they are affected by lighting or not affected by lighting. So um, your different grease pencil layers. At the moment, I'm just adding a HDRI into the background, make sure it's nice and evenly lit by something. But I do turn the HDRI down and use a light on the side there. I think that offers something quite interesting and special. 
If you have your grease pencils affected by the light, you can get some slight glitching, which you can see there. They go really dark when I move them into certain positions. So what I do is I change the lighting so it's fairly white-ish anyway, and turn the effectiveness of the light on my grease pencil off. And then I actually just use the curves, give it a bit of red, a bit of green, so it's kind of orangey, and turn down the blue. So it's got that nice sort of orange warmth, which I want. It's still got a little bit of color variation there. And I also go in and try some of the other options. AGX is a better color space, but we've got Aces now in Blender 5 as well. So I was playing with that. You do need to turn the exposure up a little bit. It does tend to come out a bit dark with the Aces uh, rendering. And there we have it, the final piece. I'm quite pleased with how this turned out. I think it works really nicely. I do like those grease pencil strokes. They look really good fun. Do remember if you want to see the line art layer, the outline layer, then you do need to go into camera view and move your camera around to see the full finished result. Hopefully you enjoyed this sort of process and you've learned a bit from it. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.